Hi, Linda Sessions here, and welcome to Linda's Take on Office. We're going to be looking at Excel Module 7, the Wing Marketing Assignment, and I'm going to go over and work through this assignment so you can follow along with me. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it and like my videos. So let's get going with Excel Module 7. I have already downloaded my assignment instructions and my starter file and all of my support documents. And the first thing we want to do here is insert a picture. So we're going to come up here and insert and we're going to go to pictures. I've downloaded all of these, so I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. Here's my logo that I need. Insert. And I want to make sure the upper left corner is in A1. And I want the lower, do that a little bit more. I need the upper right corner or the lower right corner to be in G7. The next thing we want to do with our picture here is add some alt text. Alt text helps those with the visual impairment if they're having uh, the information read to them through a screen reader. This is going to describe what this picture is of. And this is the Wang marketing logo. We're going to close the alt text box and I'm going to deselect my picture. The next thing we want to do is import our data from our New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles offices. So our New York office provides our information in a text file. So we're going to come up here to our data tab and we have get data, get data here. Uh, make sure that you don't have your graphics still selected for your logo. I'm going to go to get data. I'm going to go to from file and this is a text file. So we're going to choose from text. We want the one from New York. So we're going to import this. And it's might, depending on your internet connection, might take a little while for this to, to download to your computer. Uh, we're going to come over here to load and we're going to tell exactly where we want our data to be loaded to. We want it to be table. We want it to come to our existing worksheet in A10. We're going to say OK. And so here is all of our data from New York. So now we're going to load our data from Chicago. Now Chicago provides our data in an access file. So I'm going to come up here and get data. This time I'm going to select from a database. I'm going to go to Microsoft Access Database. I'm going to choose the one, the support file from Chicago. Import. And I want the Chicago table. So this is the icon for the table. Come down here to my load option. And I want to load this as a table into my existing worksheet at G16. I'm going to say OK. Now you'll notice our Chicago database, it brings back our office name. We don't want it to bring that back, so we need to edit the query for Chicago. So we're going to come over here to the Chicago And we're going to edit this query. And this is going to bring up our Power Query Editor. This is where, what the information we're bringing over from our Access Database. And we don't want this first column, so we're just going to select it, remove that column, and then we're going to close this query and load the information. And you can see it took the Chicago off of our query, what it brought over here. Our Los Angeles file office provides its data as a web page file. And so we're going to import that data. I'm going to do it a little differently here. Um, 
not going to, you can just do it from the web, but I'm going to come up here to get data. I'm going to get it from the file, and I'm going to choose this from text, CSV, and right down here, instead of just looking for a text file, I'm going to look for all files, because I want to find that web page that I downloaded through Cengage, and it is right here. Here's my support from, you can see it's a web page, it's a Chrome web page. Say import. It's going to bring that information back up here. I want the Los Angeles office. And I'm going to come down here to load and say load to. Again, I'm going to choose the table. I want it an existing worksheet in A22. I'm going to say OK. And again, you can see it's bringing back the office name, and I don't need that in my worksheet here. So I'm going to come over here to my queries. I'm going to edit, and I'm going to get rid of that first column again that shows the office name. Remove columns, close and load, and now I am ready to keep going. Now we want our new tables that we've added to our worksheet to match the color scheme for Wayne Marketing. So up here in the first table, you can come up here to the table design. I'm going to come over here to Table Styles, and I'm going to choose the dark red Table Style Light 9. And I'm going to do that to all three of my tables here to change the color. And then I also want to move the filter buttons from the header rows. So right here, I've got the filters on here. I can come up here to my Data tab and just get rid of the filter. I'm going to do that in each table. And that's going to turn the filter icons off. I want my data information here to be comma style. So I'm going to select B11 to C14. I'm going to come up to the Home tab and select comma, and then I'm going to get rid of the decimals. And I'm going to do that in all three of my tables as well. Comma style, no decimals. And now we're ready to go to step six. Now we want to total the profit from each location, but we're going to need to add a column to our table. So you can see our table is made up of three columns right now. We want it to be four columns. So I'm going to select this table up here, and I'm going to come up to Table Design, and right over here I can resize my table. And I'm going to resize my table to include that fourth area. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to do that to all three of my table areas. So I'm just going to, again, click in the table, my table design tab, choose resize table. And this is where you can actually resize that table that you brought over. Say OK. Our column heading is going to be dollar sign space profit. So we're going to do that in all three of the tables. And now in D11, we want to enter a formula without using a function that um, copies, excuse me, no. We want to create a formula without using a function that uses cell references that's going to subtract C11 from B11. So I'm going to hit equals B11. Okay, now you want to type this in. Don't use the, I don't know why, but for some reason, Cengage wants you to actually enter in the cell addresses, not just click and place them in there. So we want equals B11 
minus C11. Enter that, and it's going to automatically put the formula in the rest of the areas for you. Now here in D17, we're going to equal B17 minus C17, and enter that there. And then move down to D23, and we want to equal B23 minus C23. And it's going to automatically fill in the rest of those for you. Uh, again, if you use the point and click to enter in the information, the SIN gauge is going to count it wrong. I don't know why. So make sure you actually type in those cell addresses in there. We also want to display our profits from our different types of uh, ads. And so it wants us to uh, come up to G11 and put the information in here. Now, this is where it gets strange, and if, if you know the answer to this, please give write in the comments and let me know. But we, this print, radio, TV, and web is actually supposed to be over here in the F tab, in the F column. So I am going to just highlight all of this and move it over. And I've done this before. And then it comes back and it tells me I don't have my column, my um, formula correct in G11. But I don't know any other way to fix this. And I've looked and looked over at the instructions. And um, I have a call in to Cengage, but I haven't heard back from them yet on what's going on with this. Um, so in G11, we want to enter our profit totals. And we want to... See, I lost my place in my ad. Here we go. In G10, we're going to enter a formula using the sum function. So I'm going to equals sum and then an open parentheses. And I want to add D11 plus D17 plus D23, close parentheses. So that's going to give me my profit totals for my print ads. Now I'm going to take that formula from G10 and I'm going to copy it down to G13. So I've got all of my profit totals. Now here in G14, we want to show the profit. Uh, so I'm just going to use the um, quick analysis. So I'm going to have to first select this range, G11 to G13. And then down here is my little quick analysis box that pops up. And this is just a shortcut way to enter in charts and totals and tables, spark lines, all formatting, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to come over here to the totals area in here in my quick analysis tools and click sum. Now that little quick analysis tool can save you a lot of time going forward as you're uh, doing formulas and tables and answering stuff like that in your worksheets. So don't ever forget about that little quick analysis shortcut tool there. So now we want to enter a clustered bar chart based on our range from F9 to G13. So up here we have F9. I'm going to scroll down to G13. And you can use that little quick analysis bar if you want or up here on the insert tab. We want a bar chart, and we want the clustered column bar chart. I'm going to say OK to enter that chart here. And we want to move that chart so it covers the range A27 to G42. So I'm just going to move it down here to A27. And then I'm going to come down to the lower right corner and make it G42. So I've got my chart right there. I want to insert a text box uh, to draw attention to my web, the fact that the web profit is increasing. So I'm going to deselect my chart first. I'm going to come up here to the insert tab and here in my shapes up here in basic shapes, the very first option is text box. 
So I'm going to choose that text box. I'm just going to draw it here and I'm going to type in revenue from web ads is increasing. With my text box still selected up here in the shape format, I want the height of this to be 0.5 inches and I want the width to be 1.75 and I also want to make it stand out so I'm going to apply the colored outline dark red accent one and I'm going to move this so that the upper left corner is in G26 and I want the lower right corner to be H28. I did miss one thing over here on the bar chart. I need to come back here. So on our bar chart, it wants us to change it so that the bars are the colored fill dark red accent one. So I'm going to click on the bar in the bar chart, come up here to chart design and go to the format tab. And right here in my shape styles, I'm going to choose this colored fill dark red accent one. Then I want to go to the shape effects because I want a shadow shape effects. I want the shadow to be in the outer offset bottom. Just want to make my bars stand out a little bit here in my bar chart. In my organization chart worksheet, um, the very top title is in word art, but you can see it's black. And we want the color to uh, match our the rest of our color for our marketing department. So I'm going to come up here to the home tab. I'm going to go to my font color and I'm going to change my font color to dark red accent one. So it matches all of my other headings. Then in my smart art, the smart art that they've chosen is one that has pictures, but we don't have pictures of everybody. And so instead of having some with pictures and some not, we're going to just take the pictures out. We're going to use a different smart art. So with our smart art selected, we can come up here to the smart art design and we can change the layout to organization chart. And we want to again, make it the colors match all our logo. And so we are going to change the colors to colored fill. So right here, we've got our change colors and we've got our colored accent one. We want the color fill accent one to get that dark red. Now Raquel down here is a sales manager and she should be up in the same line with the other managers. So we just need to select that box in our smart art and come up here in our smart art design tab and promote that to move her up. Now we found out that Melissa actually has an assistant. So we're going to come down here to Melissa, select that. Then we're going to add shape to add a shape underneath Melissa and George Cruz is the marketing assistant for her. So now we have um, our organization chart, colors match our logo. We've got our advertising chart. And now we're ready to save this and submit it and Cengage for grading. So I've submitted my file and I'm ready to check my graded summary report.
and I got 93 out of 100. And again, um, I missed 7 because it doesn't like the way that formula was entered in G10. And again, in the advertising, I don't know why it's counting this wrong. And so I do have a note or an email into Cengage to see if they can help me out with this. Um, I've checked and I'm, I don't know why it counts that wrong. So if you, if any of you find out and have that answer, please put it, send it to me in comments. And so I can get this video updated. In the meantime, if this is an assignment for your class and you're running into that as well, just reach out to your instructor um, and let them know. So that is our Rang marketing assignment, um, Excel module seven, project one. Hopefully you learned some new things. You were able to follow along with me. Reach out if you have some questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them as I see them come through. So as always, here on Linda's Take, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you like what you see, like my videos. And wherever you are, I hope you've had some sunshine in your life today. Bye-bye.